Sweep over my heart. Hmm. A lovely song, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Life is one. Oh yes, life is wonderful, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Let's really lift this up to the Lord. Life is wonderful. Yes, it's wonderful. Life is wonderful. Life is wonderful. Life is wonderful. Life is wonderful.
that's the same song. We know this one, yes? It's okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Will anybody have a favorite this morning? Well, 224, I think. 224? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, it's lovely. <laughs> Good picture. Good picture. <laughs> Oh, 
Let's build this this house. Do you know what's is it not we we we've said it before. (laughs) 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 We said it before. (laughs) Okay, let's try it then. Anzi goes so good. Tell you what, that one we can practice it again and uh, another time. Choose a, <laughs> choose seven, eighteen, please. Seven, eight, oh. Seven, eight, oh. Let's. Yeah. This is a three verse. Seven, eight, oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We want to get it right, don't we? <laughs> 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 oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know this one come? You do know that one. All right. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. The Uh, Brian, a very warm welcome to everyone uh, here today and anyone watching online. Um, We'll uh, open up with a hymn, Down at the Cross Where My Saviour Died. (laughs) 
do know this one very well. I'm still trying to work out whether Calm has the best memory of the chorus, as we know, or the worst. It's probably the best. It's, she's probably the best. It's, it's, everyone else is letting it down. Uh, right, we'll all stand to uh, to sing this. And uh, after that, if I could just ask uh, Darren to open with a word. again this day Lord uh, as we uh, come around to take and have sweet communion today Lord and we know that our communion is with you first Father and the Son and one with another and uh, we rejoice Lord that we have been set aside uh, to hear things Lord today wonderful things from your holy word Lord given to a holy people Lord and we rejoice as we uh, we think upon your dear Son Lord, that he was an obedient son unto you, Father. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord. Lord, that we can be partakers of this communion uh, meeting today through your uh, heart was given to your uh, Father's calling. And uh, we also look forward to the, uh, the word uh, that has been prepared for us today, Lord. We know, Lord, that that will be a, a glorious blessing for us in spiritual manner from heaven uh, today, Lord. And uh, we know that uh, we're gathered together here to be blessed by you, Lord. And all our needs will be taken care of once again by you, Lord. And we know, Father, we, we can return to you uh, praise and glory, which is due to your name this day. And we thank you, Lord, for all things. Amen. Let's just commit that prayer to the Lord in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, we'll all be seated. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> announcements. So, we've got the meetings as uh, as normal on uh, Wednesday and uh, next Sunday. So, it's 7.30 here on uh, on Wednesday. And then on Sunday, we do just have the, the one meeting, the morning meeting at 11 o'clock, uh, followed by the, uh, the communal lunch. Um, so uh, I'll be, it's a uh, school half term um, and uh, may be busy um, over, the, over the next week. So uh, anything required um, up until next Sunday, if you can contact uh, Lee, please. Um, and then just in terms of upcoming uh, events on the, on the Saturday. So on Saturday, the 4th of November, uh, we've got a quiz and games night. That will be here at this hall from uh, 6 p.m. 
Um, so if you do, if you have any particular uh, card or board games um, you'd like to uh, to play, please bring those along. And that is open open invitation to uh, to anybody. And then the following Saturday, the 11th of November, we've got prayer and fast. So that will be uh, from 2.30. That will be at uh, the hall just up the road in Colpit Heath, uh, the Manor Hall in Colpit Heath. Please do uh, ask if you need more details on that. So that will be from, from 2.30. Uh, that will be the same format as we've had uh, previously, sort of short, short talks, short uh, prayer times together as well. And uh, no, no planned activities on the 18th of, uh, of November, but there is a uh, London uh, day out. Um, I think a few of the London fellowships are getting together on that date. Um, please ask for more details if you'd like uh, more information on that. Um, I think that is it in terms of uh, upcoming announcements. So we do have uh, time for a testimony or two. Is there anyone who would like to give a testimony this morning? Okay, now, thank you. <clears throat> yes, I'd really like to praise the Lord for my salvation. I was baptized by full immersion and I received the Holy Spirit a few weeks after at my first camp in England. And I'd really like to praise the Lord that that was 1995. And since then, there's been my, many trials, many things I've gone through, but the Lord has never left me. And I'd really like to praise the Lord. Something happened with uh, my elder sister this week you know and uh, I had a phone call that she'd fallen down and broke broke her hip bone and she's 84 so um, obviously the family was worried over there and um, I committed that that night to the Lord and um, I was thinking of her a lot and then like a peace came over me after a few hours and um, she had an operation Friday morning and um, she was sitting up in a chair yesterday with just uh, one drip in her arm and everything was good. So I'd really like to praise the Lord that we can pray for our unsaved family. And even if, you know, they haven't taken to the word, we know that um, as long as there's life, there's hope. And I'd really like to praise the Lord for that. Amen. And praise God, we've got a wonderful uh, resource that even in a situation where we are powerless, uh, we know someone who is all powerful and we can uh, we can call upon him at any time, praise him for that. Is there uh, another testimony? Fine, thank you. <clears throat> yes, I certainly like to praise the Lord for his wonderful love and uh, for saving me. Uh, it's 1992 when I heard the word and um, it's been a, a wonderful walk knowing God and knowing what God stands for. I want to you know, just I was thinking about grace this morning before I, before I got to the meeting and that wonderful grace, this wonderful gift of God, you know, that grace where, you know, God, you know, gives us that wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit. We're not saved by our works. It's not our works. You know, our works are nothing, you know, but it's the gift of God, the grace of God. And, uh, I was thinking about that wonderful grace of God. He bestows upon all that believe in him, that have faith in him. And, uh, you know, and uh, the opportunities are, you know, that God offers us now while we, you know, while we live now. And uh, we know the darkness that is upon the earth now. We know the things that are going on in the, uh, uh, in the world now. We can see that clearly. You know, this is the chance what we have now, the opportunity to be saved by his wonderful grace. And we can't throw that back in God's face. We can't do that. We can't do that. We have to, we have to look to the Lord. And we have to have faith in him. And we have to take those opportunities that are available to us now by God's grace and save ourselves while we have the opportunity. And, uh, you know, I beseech any person that can hear me, as I always say that, you know, seek the Lord why it may be found you know because it's this is the time look we see the things that are happening around us the darkness it's a darkness that we feel you know and it's time to seek the Lord it's time to save yourselves from what is coming you know we cannot reject God if we reject him we know that God can if we reject God you know if God rejects us, it's permanent. 
it's permanent. But while we have this opportunity to be saved, let's grasp that with both hands, with our hearts, and seek God while we can find him. You know, and uh, I just like to praise the Lord because I was just considering these things as I was coming to the meeting this morning. You know, it's just wonderful to know that you're saved with God. You know, you have received his promise of the Holy Spirit and you speak in his wonderful language, tongues to him. And you glorify him because it's all about him. You know, and uh, it's a shame that, if, you know, this world rejects God. But there are, there are sheep out there that don't know. And, um, you know, if they hear God's word and they come along and be saved, then that'd be wonderful. And, you know, and that's what it's about. That's what it's about, saving souls from the, the darkness that's coming. And, uh, you know, I'd just like to praise the Lord for that. And uh, was there any other testimony this morning? Dave? Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, praise the Lord. Um, I haven't given a testimony like this for a while. I came to the Lord in 1984. Um, I was quite depressed at the time, antidepressant tablets, all that kind of thing. Um, um, I was at college and um, the, I, this guy I knew at college, he was a, a bad lad, you know, sort of petty burglary, that kind of thing. And uh, he went away on holiday and uh, he had this flute on this beat or something and it eventually led him to the Lord and he ended up, that was in Spain, he came back to Bristol and uh, he received the Holy Spirit, obviously speaking in tongues. And he was kind of on the outside of this Church of England group in um, Redland. Uh, there were a few of them could speak in tongues and I think they were operating prophecy as well. And uh, I... I saw that he, he came back from the six weeks college holiday and I, I thought this, he didn't have to say anything. I thought this guy's completely changed, you know. And um, I started hanging around with him because I wanted what he had because I was unhappy and he wasn't. <laughs> and um, I think they prayed for me at some point. But um, I ended up um, receiving the Holy Spirit on my own. My mum and dad had gone on a holiday. I was living in the same house as them. They went on holiday. And I, I was, for some reason, now on their, their bed, I don't know why, but I was. And uh, I just, I was just, I, it was two years. I'd been humbled, really humbled for about two years. And um, I came to a point of believing after that two years. And I started um, just thanking the Lord, expecting to receive, and I did. On my own, just started speaking in tongues, and um, I was healed of smoking. I didn't pray; I just just gone. Um, <clears throat> I had a. Um, I used to sleep with a board under my bed, and I'd have this um, back, back treatment. I think it was white noise or something. Didn't do much, and again, that was that was completely healed. All on receiving the Holy Spirit. Um, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I've had some good miracles. Um, my, my parents have got many friends in Portishead, and I don't really socialise with them. So they, they, they come in and they say, oh, such and such has got this illness, or such and such has got that illness. And one chap, he used to run the local um, toy shop. So I, I knew him from years back. And uh, he was in a... <clears throat> uh, he, was, um, he was in a coma um, in the hospital. And I thought, well... I don't, I don't, I can't really say, can I go and see him? Because my mum and dad don't agree with what I believe, you know. And I just, I just really prayed for this guy over about two or three weeks. <clears throat> and, um, sorry, I'm having difficult. Uh, they, they went to turn off the life support system <clears throat> and his eyes opened and he, he lived after that. Sorry, I can't carry on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Find it difficult sometimes. Yeah, I can certainly praise the Lord um, for my salvation and for everything that he's done for me. 
um, I, I had a healing a couple of months ago and I'd forgotten about it until I was sorting out some of my photos on my phone and I came across them. Um, so basically, I, nothing was wrong, I didn't feel ill, but I, I noticed these um, spots appearing on my body and I thought, oh, that's a bit odd, but I, I just prayed about it. And, um, and then at the time we were actually in Australia and it was getting a bit worse, but I was like, no, I prayed about it, it'll be fine. And I kind of said to myself, if, if it's still there when I get home, then you know I'll go and see about it uh, just in case it's something. But as I said, I was feeling fine in myself, but it was just a bit strange. And then um, we got home and the rash was really bad. I don't know if we can put the photos up, but it looked, it looked like this, just so you can see how bad the rash is. So that's the top of my arm there. And then that's my torso. So I was, I was just completely covered in spots like that. And um, uh, I, went, I went to the doctors and they said it was nothing to worry about, um, that it lasts for up to three months maybe, but um, they were, you know, I didn't have any itching or anything like that, which they expected. But I suppose the blessing was that even though something looked so bad, I just praise the Lord that I was absolutely fine and I just had a peace. I just knew that it was it was going to be okay no matter no matter what it was. And um, there was something that I've heard. I can't remember where I heard it, but it said, um, "I'm not afraid of the next chapter because I know the author." And I just thought that was the testimony that I had during that time that it didn't matter. Um, what that was I knew that the Lord would look after me and take care of it and I just like to thank the Lord that he is in my life and that um, you know he's a he's a God and a father that we can call on any time and I like to thank the Lord for that. Amen. Beautiful things to hear I think sometimes those are some of the best miracles that the Lord does for us where he's clearly given us such a peace on it that you almost forget you've got that problem <laughs> so you remember later oh yeah the Lord sorted that one out for me. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, that's wonderful, and it's only God that can uh, do that. Praise Him for that. Uh, was there any other testimony this afternoon? Oh, Darren? Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, I'd like to um, just praise the Lord. Uh, um, what I've been hearing in the Word and through the gifts of light. Um, of God's uh, great love for us, you know. Uh, the Lord seems to be just reiterating more and more every meeting how much he cares for his sheep, uh, his children, you know, and um, uh, every week there's something there that the Lord's just, just pressing at home more and more and more and more of how much he does care and love us dearly. Uh, more than words can tell, I think, you know, and um, and I was just, just thinking you hear it in the world a lot today, you know, oh, oh yes, I, I love the Lord Jesus, you know, and I, I love God, and um, yeah, that, that's fair enough, but not too many people, I believe, know God's love towards them, his deep, deep love that he gave his only son to the world, that he loved the world, that he gave Jesus but I was just particularly thinking of ourselves, um, you know. Uh, it's it's you read in Romans eight, you know. There's nothing that can separate us from that covenant of love that the Lord has brought between us and Himself. You know, God cannot fail in that love. It's a covenant of love for all of us. And um, sometimes, you know, you, you 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 might lose sight of that, and you go back to work, you go back to the world. Monday morning rolls around, and you know, uh, the mundane life is there, but the Lord's love is far greater than that and how wonderful it is, you know. And, um, you know, it's just something I've, I've just been conscious of what the Lord's been saying to us, you know. Uh, and uh, even today it was how his intimate love is is, is very much for us and um, uh, it's something to, to uh, seek the Lord about, really look to the Lord about and seek seek. Seek the Lord's love, what He has for us, and an understanding of that, and um, I just rejoice in that. Praise the Lord. Good things to be reminded of. Con, uh, yeah. Um, I 
Yes, I'd like to, to, to praise and thank the Lord for everything that he's, he's done for me. I'd just like to, to praise the Lord for the, uh, the opportunity to, to speak to, to, to my sisters about, about the, the Lord and, you know, in light of, 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 of the, um, um, the events of, of um, you know, what, what, what's happening in, in Israel, I, I, I stress the, um, the importance and, and urgency of, of coming to, to the Lord. And I was, I was able to, to, uh, to send them uh, a presentation that, that that, uh, that, that Pastor Dennis um, gave about, about the the Middle East and and, and why why the the conflict um, um, you know happened and you know, what 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 the the Bible say says about about the Lord coming coming back and and um, you know I just 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 I like to, to praise the Lord that you know that, that I do I do I do have an, an answer to to give give them and and um, and I just just I like, like to. To praise the Lord that you know um, my my family can can see what 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 uh, so can 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 see my my testimony and uh, my 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 niece Isabella she she she's nine and she she's been uh, um, uh, uh, she's been asking me a lot lot of questions and I just 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 uh, praise and I thank the Lord that um, that he he saved saved me and I you know heaven pray that that my family um, get get saved and praise the Lord for everything. Thanks very much, Jessica. Okay. <coughs> right, if we can open up to um, Exodus chapter 20, please. And um, in this chapter, we we read about what's generally known as the as the Ten Commandments uh, that were given to Moses on the mount there. Uh, and we know this was a, a perfect law, but because of man's uh, weakness, um, they couldn't uh, they couldn't uh, abide with it. Uh, uh, man's sinful way um, just took them out of the way <laughs> but this is this is the, the perfect law uh, which is is now uh, replaced of course by the, the grace of of our Lord Jesus through his uh, through his sacrifice and uh, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit etc but we read in, in verse from verse 3 it says you shall have thou shalt have no other gods before me um, and of course we know there there is only one uh, God, which is our Father in heaven, the, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's our, our Holy Trinity. Um, thou shalt have no other God before me. And then verse 4, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the Father upon the children, and to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Um, we, we could, I, I didn't really want to read the last part of that verse, but thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Um, so the Lord wanted a people uh, to serve him uh, because he he was their creator um, and that love uh, that he had for his creation uh, was is pretty evident right through the whole of the of the, of the Bible there um, so these things that uh, were created uh, that the Lord warned against we we know them as Idols, I suppose, is, is the word that covers covers everything. Um, so there were no idols to be made and certainly not to be bowed down before. Uh, there was one God, this jealous God, the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything therein. 
Uh, unfortunately, we see today uh, that, uh, well, <laughs> not only today, but right through the ages, uh, men have worshipped uh, what what they think uh, or what they want to, um, what they think might be uh, some sort of deity has got powers. Um, uh, and they've made images of what they think their likeness is um, and have bowed down and worshipped them uh, to no avail really because there's nothing in them um, and unfortunately today we see many religions even those who uh, who claim to be Christian religions have uh, premises or what they call churches full of uh, full of idols um, uh, we see them paraded through the streets on sort of festival days uh, and I know when I was in when I was in Malta uh, there was a there was a man there was a businessman and uh, he paid at the time and that was back in the uh, back in the I think it was the late 90s early 2000s he, he paid seven thousand pounds or the equivalent of seven thousand pounds just for the privilege of uh, being on a corner of, of, a, of, of a platform which was carrying an idol you know par parading through the streets uh, and they thought it was a great honor to do that um, uh, how, how, how lost uh, are our people you know and how lost is is other religion and even some of the Christian, so-called Christian religions that we see today, uh, as I said, their places are full of idols, and they they bow down to them as they enter in and, and this and that, uh, and they say it's reverence towards the Lord, but uh, uh, the Lord didn't want this, uh, and He's very clear here. Um, let's turn to Psalm 115. And we read here from, yeah, from verse, verse four. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet they have, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. And, uh, you know, we know these idols are made from plaster or wood or stone, or these days, I suppose, plastic uh, or various other things and of course they're just uh, just models I suppose statues uh, that we call uh, and uh, they're lifeless um, so why why should men bow before them and pray to them uh, is beyond me uh, and they, their prayers are obvious uh, obviously in vain they get no. They can have no response from uh, from these idols, uh, no matter what they represent, um, because they they are not praying to a living God. They are not praying to the Creator of the heavens and earth, to the the Spirit, um, which we know is is the is the way to to pray. God is a Spirit, and uh, those that. Uh, worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so it, it's not um, it's not just a, a physical thing to, to worship the living God it's uh, it's he is he is that spirit uh, that life um, that love and that uh, light of the whole world uh, he's, he's not he can't be represented by any form um, 
it's just uh, it's just an impossibility uh, but we see millions and millions of people around the world uh, bowing down and worshiping uh, these these images I think that's what uh, idol means uh, I think it's from the Greek uh, idolum which means an image or a likeness um, if we read on, that was um, where do, where we, verse 8 in Psalm 115. They that make them are like them, so is everyone that trusteth in them. Um, yeah, they that, they that make them are like them. It says it's here, so it must be true. You know, they have no, they have no life in them. Uh, they are... Uh, I suppose the dead leading the dead. <laughs> we we read about the blind leading the blind. These are these are the dead leading the dead. I suppose. Um, and uh, unfortunately, they're completely lost, and it's a very sad thing, you know, uh, that uh, they've been uh, deceived in this way and are still being deceived in this way um, so they they have no hope they've been given a false hope in 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 these in these religions uh, whether they are uh, so-called christian or or others and we know that um, religions other than christian religions are, are very fond of uh, of all sorts of uh, uh, idols and gods uh, in fact, if we turn to Romans chapter 1, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It's just verse 25. Uh, it's talking about the people who, who, who worship idols, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Uh, so they, they serve the creature, something that was created of God. Uh, I know some religions, they bow down to statues of elephants some bow down to statues of uh, women arrayed in jewelry who've got about six six arms or something like that um, and various other things various other animals and, and so forth uh, you know so so lost so unfortunate but we have a we have a message uh, of truth for them all uh, we'll speak about that a bit later on. Let's turn to um, Jeremiah chapter 7. So this world is full of uh, religion. This world is full of uh, idols. I know where Jeremiah is. I just can't, <laughs> just can't get to it. Uh, right, Jeremiah chapter seven, hmm. uh, verse seventeen. Seventeen. Seest thou not what they do in the streets of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle a fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and pour out drink offerings uh, and to other gods that they may provoke me to anger so the lord is very angry about about this and it was back in the day of jeremiah there even uh, you know the people who, who who the lord had called to be his people and, and who he brought out from uh, slavery um to be their god and for them to be his people 
uh, and they'd seen many a wonderful thing that the Lord had performed, many miracles, many great things down through the ages, and they were still uh, gathering wood and, and making these cakes to the Queen of Heaven. Um, uh, this this uh, this false this false god, I suppose. Um, and they had many back in back in the day. I think Astroth was was one, and this must have may have been Astroth. She was some sort of uh, Phoenician or Sidonian goddess um, who they used to who they used to serve. And there were even some some idols that they made that they actually <coughs> put put fire in. Their arms were outstretched like that. They used to put fire inside them, and these things would get red hot. And they'd put their children in the arms and burn. They'd burn their children to death on these idols, you know. So, well, who can understand? Who can understand these things? Um, terrible. And the Lord, Lord God, uh, had warned them against uh, this this evil, uh, but still they persisted. Um, and still do to this day. I don't know of any human sacrifices that go on today, but you know, certainly a lot of idol worship. Uh, Psalm, uh, Psalm uh, 97, and we'll move on to something a little different. Psalm 97. We reach here in, uh, in verse 7. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols, um, worship him, holy God. So I say, to, you know, worship, worship the Lord. Uh, but, you know, they are confounded and they are confounded. They're lost. They have no hope. They have no future. Uh, and um, who, who, can, who can understand it? Um, and the Lord God, you know, would, would have us to be in that safe place, in that place of hope, uh, that place where we have the, that eternal future with him. Uh, but men uh, have, have these other thoughts for whatever reason. Uh, we, we did share in, in the gifts about uh, being distracted and taking our eyes off the Lord, you know, uh, and that that can happen that can happen to us it can happen to to anyone uh and we 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 just be in the, in the house we we've been watching this uh documentary on uh david beckham um and i was not being a football fan i i knew he was a good football player and he was he was very famous back in the day when he was uh when he was on top form but i didn't realize until i I watched this documentary, how much he was uh, worshipped, really, by by his fans, by people around the world, even who didn't know much about football, especially uh, younger women, obviously, because of his his looks and his his sort of status in the world, and uh, it was a, a real eye opener how how they uh, how they really uh, went. You know, some people who didn't even like football, they traveled halfway around the world just to get a glimpse of him, you know, as he entered uh, into the stadium or something. <laughs> uh, and it was it was unbelievable. But he was he was he was worshipped almost like like a God, uh, according to this documentary. And I, I can well believe it because uh, back in the day when when I was uh, younger, before before I heard the word, uh, some of the some of the great rock stars, you know, of the day back in the sixties, we used to think, "Oh, these these people are great," you know. Uh, I wouldn't say that I worship them, but I, I thought, you know, they they're really good. They must be something special. Uh, so you can see how, how people are, are taken away with, with this sort of thing. Um, so you know, these graven images are not the only idols in in the world, uh, and. There always have been others, I suppose, you know, celebrity uh, particularly, you know, uh, they are followed, they are put on sort of pedestals by people, uh, and uh, they think they can't do any wrong. Uh, and it's a great distraction to people, especially 
uh, especially, especially younger people, I suppose, uh, who see see this and uh, they do sort of idolize them and put them up there as, uh, as I want to be like that person, uh, and they they'll almost do anything to try and uh, copy the the actions of that person uh, and uh, to try and get to that place where where they are. Um, regardless of cost or what it's doing to them or family or whatever. Uh, so this is this is sort of uh, a, an idol worship as well. Uh, some people uh, in certain um, certain parts of the world, they, they seem to idolize their children uh, a lot. Uh, others, um, they have pictures of grandparents on the walls and, and they sort of almost pray to them uh, as, as, as being some sort of spiritual uh, leader or being. Uh, we've mentioned sport, of course, sport. Uh, just even the playing of, of sport can get people uh, so distracted that they, uh, they, they can't do anything else. You know, that's all they think of. That's all they dream of day and night. Uh, and I think Beckham was like that. He, he you know, any, nothing came in the way of his, of his football. Uh, he, 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 he sort of uh, dragged his family from pillar to post uh, for his own gratification in, in the sport. Uh, not really considering the kids by the sound of it. You know, they had to be dragged to different schools and this and that. Um, some people's professions can get in their way. They want to they want to climb to the heights, the dizzy heights of being the boss. Uh, business empires uh, rule so many lives. You know, the business rules the people, uh, not the people controlling the business. The business controls them. Uh, and we see this with, you know, the, the, these multi, these billionaires these days. Um, and I suppose people are self-indulgent these days as well. Uh, they got to have uh, the perfect body. They got to have this, that, and the other. You know. Uh, so there's a, quite a bit of self-worship, I think, uh, these days, which is all. Um, I suppose a sort of of, of idol worship, uh, which is a, which is taking us away from uh, knowing the truth and performing the truth. We, we've all had situations, and I did mention it some some time ago, where we've been telling people about the truth of the Bible and how they can have a, a better life and an eternal life with with God, uh, how how they can uh, be saved the Bible way, be born again have this new life and uh, they've got excuse. Uh, I did mention that one, you know, wanted her kids to play uh, mini rugby on the Sunday, so she couldn't come to the meetings. There were an elder couple who, who, who liked bowling, you know, uh, green bowling and, and that. And they they couldn't give that up on, on a Sunday for, for anything because all their friends were there and this and that. Uh, so, you know, this is, this is, Something that uh, takes people, uh, causes people not to to want to to know the truth, to want not to want to uh, get involved. Uh, and how can their understanding, I suppose, be so uh, shallow on the things that pass away when they when they're offered eternity, you know, a life, uh, a better life now, and an eternal life. Uh, but I suppose. Uh, we, we were we were like that until until our hearts were changed by that word so praise the lord that our word was effectual to us um yeah all, all these things are, are more important or essential to to people's lives more than god and our lord jesus um let's go to ephesians Chapter four, and from yeah, from verse four, the Bible states a, a truth here: there is one body, 
one spirit, even as you all are called in one hope of, of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, whom is above all and through all and in you all. And um, this is this is a great truth, and uh, we have uh, experienced this uh, this new life, this being born again, um, being baptized uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, have uh, repented in our hearts, have wanted to to change, and and then have received that gift of the of the Holy Ghost, um, with that evidence of speaking in tongues. This this wonderful experience we've. We, we've all experienced here and know this to be true you know this one body which is the body of christ which is his uh his church which we are members of uh we are in him and he is in in us um and we have that great hope um because we uh, we know that, that god is a faithful god that our Lord Jesus was faithful unto his Father and did his bidding, was um, was crucified for us, suffered for us, and uh, rose again, uh, justifying us. Um, and we have entered into that um, eternal life, that everlasting life, as, as we keep faith with our Lord. Uh, so, you know, we, we've put all our idols aside whether they were before we were saved, whether they were statues or whether they were uh, sport or celebrity or, or possessions or whatever. Uh, we've seen uh, that God is true to his word and we've experienced this uh, newness of life and all that goes with it. He's poured uh, so many benefits upon us. Um, and we've seen miracles in our lives, uh, which is all glory to his name. So praise the Lord for that. Um, First Timothy chapter two, similar sort of scriptures, I think. Yeah, First Timothy chapter two, verse, verse five. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And we know Jesus died uh, so that we could have this uh, New Testament in his blood, that, um, that, that, that perfect law which we read in the beginning, you know, those Ten Commandments, they, they are engraved in our hearts. Uh, and uh, there's that grace there for us. Um, that wonderful grace that uh, if we do uh, err, or err, I think the word is err, <laughs> if we do go astray, uh, and it's, it's difficult in our flesh not to, uh, to sometimes do the wrong thing, we don't do it um, willingly, but we, we do slip up. Uh, but the Lord's grace is there for us as our heart is uh, humble before him and, and repentant before him uh, to, to pick us up off the ground again as we fall down, you know, and to stand us on our feet, dust us off, and we say, sorry, sorry, Lord, you know, um, we've done that. Uh, but that forgiveness is there for us, that, that wonderful grace that we have, we've never earned. Uh, it, was, it was just there for us. That love of God, that compassion for our souls, uh, caused him to give us that grace uh, so we can stand uh, before him uh, and we don't we, we know that him alone and his, his son you know are, are the things that we that we hold dear the, the things that, the things of the people if we can call them people the spirits the, the wonderful holy spirit which is in us we can speak to them and we know that they hear us, and we'll turn to First John now, chapter five. We'll read about that, and we'll finish there. Yeah, 
First John chapter five. And we'll, as I say, we'll finish here um, from verse, verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us, um, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. So we do look to the Lord um, in our lives for things that we, we can't overcome. Of, of even just the compassion we have for the souls of men to put people before us so we can speak um, this this word of truth uh, and we know he's not like these graven images who have ears and can't hear who has a voice and can't speak uh, and can't do anything because there's, there's no life in them this is this is the this is the living God who we speak to who we ask according to his his purpose and will and it says you hear us and we know it because he's answered us. He does answer us. He answers our prayers. And we know that. And praise the Lord. Praise him for it. Otherwise, we, uh, we would be as lost as these who, who, who have not got, uh, who, who worship these, these graven images. Uh, and verse 20 and 21. And we know that the Son of God is come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true even the son jesus christ this is the true god and eternal life so through christ we have eternal life uh, and we he is our all he is our everything uh, and let's not be distracted and in the last verse here it says it all little children keep yourselves from idols amen so praise the Lord for these uh, these wonderful truths we have uh, for the living God. And I'll leave those thoughts there. And we have a time of prayer now. Uh, and if there are any needs, just come to the front and uh, they can be prayed for. I was considering how there's a few different ways that the Holy Spirit is talked about in the word, uh, different symbols, different uh, types, different analogies um, that are used to help us understand what the Holy Spirit is, how it, how it works and what it can do. And there's a bit of um, similarity, a bit of a crossover in some ways um, to what the, the ancient Greeks believed. And the ancient Greeks were a civilization that sort of culturally uh, dominated um, a lot of the, the Mediterranean um, areas and uh, around, the, around the Middle East, including, including um, Israel uh, at the time. Um, obviously, the Roman Empire was, was dominant at the, at the time of Jesus Christ, but the Romans had a bit of a thing for the for the Greeks and for Greek culture. They highly regarded it. Uh, they basically copied all of the uh, all of the Greek gods and made their own Roman versions of the of the Greek uh, the Greek gods. So you know the the Greeks had the uh, the god of war Ares, for example, and the and the Romans took that and changed it into their own god of war Mars, and and they did that with with all sorts of different things. Uh, the, the Romans. Uh, consumed Greek culture, and they were they were very very big fans. And of course, one of the things that the the ancient Greeks were were known for um, was their philosophy and their philosophizing. Um, and about 450 BC um, or so, there were some particularly uh, well known philosophers. You know, people will have heard the names of people like Aristotle, for for example. Um, and a lot of the philosophies that were written then are still talked about today. Um, one of the per pervasive ideas that the Greeks had, one, one idea which persisted for a long, long time, um, was this idea of the, the four elements, uh, which was uh, earth, wind, fire, 
um, and water. And the, the ancient Greeks believed that everything in the, in the world was made up of some combination of these four elements, earth, wind, water, and fire. So that everything that we, we could see, everything that existed was, was made up of, the, of these kind of elements. And, uh, you know, even though it's, it's obviously not based on anything, you know, scientific or, any, or anything, it was a philosophical idea, this idea really stuck. And until probably 14th, 15th century, so for probably 2000 years, this idea of the, of the elements, of the four elements and everything in the world being made up of these, of these different elements, it was, uh, it was widespread in, in the ideas of how people looked at the material world and the ideas of how people even treated things like medicine, uh, uh, like science, um, and how they saw the world. So the, it's, uh, it's interesting that in the, in the Bible, particularly when we, um, when we look at the Holy Spirit, um, the Holy Spirit is, is talked about in manners um, that relate to uh, some of these different elements. And um, I just thought to, uh, to look at a couple of those things, uh, a couple of those things today, because, you know, the, the, the New Testament obviously was written in Greek at the, at the time. And the people reading this would have been very, very familiar of, of, this, I, uh, of this idea, of this concept of the different elements of, of earth, wind, uh, water and fire. Um, so if we, if we look at, at Acts chapter 2, uh, this, this shows us a couple of them um, right here. So in Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And uh, we'll just read on. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So uh, we see here that it talks about a, a rushing mighty wind. And we know when Jesus in, in John chapter three, when he was talking to, to Nicodemus, he used this example of, of wind as well. You know, he talked about uh, the Holy Spirit being like the wind, you know, it bloweth where it listeth and, uh, and you hear the sound thereof, but you know not from whence it comes. And uh, in, in the, the ancient Greek um, philosophies, interestingly, they, they thought that the wind that that was the the spiritual element. That was the the, the element that represented uh, the the spiritual things and also the things of of knowledge uh, as well, uh, the things of of wisdom, the things of uh, intelligence. Now, some of those things are, are consistent with with how the the word shows us um, that the the Holy Spirit is. But the the word for uh, wind, the word for um, spirit in in the in the Greek and also in the Hebrew relates to the word for breath. It relates to the word for for life. You know, we read um, in the book of Genesis. Uh, we read when the Lord formed Adam from the from the dust of the ground. It says he breathed into him the breath of life. So this idea of the of the spirit as the, the Holy Spirit as of a wind, as of a, a rushing mighty wind, um, it talks about life it talks about um the, the spirit breathes life into us as the lord breathed life into into adam um, and it also speaks of uh, of inspiration you know the uh, the word um uh, the spirit itself when it comes when it enters into us it fills us up and it inspires us it gives us that new life uh, and it gives us the the wisdom uh, interestingly enough of of god you know, I mentioned so the Greeks saw wind as the as the element of wisdom, as the element of knowledge. And Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit when he comes, the comforter, when he comes, he shall teach you all things. And, um, you know, the Lord teaches us by the uh, by the spirit. Um, praise the Lord for that. And um, we'll uh, we'll come back to, uh, to, to the fire uh, in a uh, in a moment. We'll just move on to another um, of the elements. Uh, John in John chapter seven. <clears throat> John 
John chapter 7, and uh, this was, we'll just read actually from verse 37, John seven thirty-seven. In the last day, a great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And that's quite uh, an image, rivers of, of living water flowing out of the out of the belly. And that just means out of the out of the inner man. And, you know, when you think of, of uh, water in the in the body, you'd you'd more likely think of water flowing into the body. You know, he's talking about coming and drinking. Um, but then he also says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So he's talking about drinking, but then also he's talking about the water flowing flowing out of us. You know, how could that be possible in a, in a natural sense that rivers of water could flow out, flow out from us? And when the spirit is uh, spoken of in this sense of uh, water, it really talks about, you know, water was something that was very prominent in the um in the uh, a lot of the rituals of the old covenant you know there was a lot of purification that was needed a lot of sanctification a lot of cleansing a lot of ritual washing you know things needed to be made clean before you know a sacrifice could be given for example or or, or before someone was considered clean in the eyes of the law you know they needed to be to be washed um, washed clean and when the word talks about the spirit as a as a water, um, it it often really refers to the fact that the the spirit it can cleanse us when when we receive the Holy Spirit. You know we are we are made anew, and it also uh, talks about that refreshing. You know the, the 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 spirit can refresh you. It can revitalize you. It can renew you. You know I I know that the part of my day when I feel that generally the most refreshed and renewed is when I've just had a nice nice hot shower you know or a cold shower on a, on a warm day uh, that water you know flowing uh, it really does revitalize you you know more than more than anything else could and that's that's what the Holy Spirit does um, praise the praise the Lord for that and in the in the ancient Greek uh, understanding of the of the water they saw water as the element of life. You know, we know water it is necessary for for life. You know, the reason why there's no life on other planets, there's no life on the on the moon is because there's no there's no water there. And all life came from the water and water is is necessary um, for uh, for all life as well. Um, so we'll um, just go to the well, actually, we can't really go to the third uh, element, which is which is Earth, because that is the one of the four Greek elements which the spirit is never um, compared to in the in the word. It's ne the spirit is never compared to earth, and earth in the in the Bible in the word is really the uh, the element of the the natural things, the material things, natural natural man, the opposite of the of the spiritual things. You know the closest. Uh, the closest symbol we get to to the earth in the in the word is instead the rock. You know, we, we, we know Christ is talked about as the rock, that thing that is stable and uh, and unmoving. But the Holy Spirit is actually never compared to the to the earth in the uh, in the Bible. And that that would have been significant, I think, for the, 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 the people with the understanding of Greek culture who read it, that the, the spirit was it was completely separate. It was completely um, opposed to the natural things, to the things, to the things of the earth. And um, we read in First uh, Corinthians chapter fifteen, just an example of that. First um, Corinthians fifteen, and uh, from verse. Uh, <clears throat> we'll read verse forty-four. He said, it is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And we'll just go down to verse 47. It says, the first man, uh, which is the natural man, is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And I was comparing, you know, Christ to, uh, to Adam. Verse 48, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. 
And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. And verse 50 ties it all together. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So the word of God tells us that we, we cannot be earthy uh, if we want to inherit the kingdom of God. We can't um, fashion ourselves after the things of this world, after the, the natural life. Uh, that is the element that we are opposed to. Uh, that's, that's the opposite for us. And um, we'll just uh, have a look at the, uh, the fire. <clears throat> And again, sorry, compare, comparing it to the um, to the Greek uh, understanding, um, they also saw the earth at, as the the element of the natural world, the physical world, the, the, the material world as well. Um, and so, looking at the fire, and uh, you know, th this this could be a whole separate talk. Looking at the uh, the spiritual symbolism of uh, of fire. Um, Let's go to Luke 12. So fire, it refines. We, we, we read that in the word. It was used to, you know, refine uh, impure materials into, into pure ones. Um, fire is something that um, it renews uh, as well in a, in a, in a strange sense. Um, if you've ever watched... Uh, nature documentary about uh about wildfires um it's actually interesting that in nature uh wildfires can actually be a good thing for the environment um because sometimes uh a patch of you know forest or, or wood or, or or um scrubland um can be built up with a lot of essentially dead wood or or, or old trees over over time and nothing new can grow there and when a fire sweeps through it, you know, it can seem to be devastating. Um, but what comes after the fire is growth, is renewal, is regeneration. Um, and, and so many good things can come from it. Um, so in, in Luke chapter 12 uh, and verse 49, this is the, the words of Jesus. He said, I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it all be already kindled. In other translations, it says, uh, instead of, uh, but what will I? He said, uh, how I wish it was already kindled. I am come to send a fire on the earth and how I wish it was already kindled. Um, but in verse 50, but I have a baptism to be baptized with. He's talking about his death here. And how am I straightened or how am I um, restricted or, or held back until it be accomplished so jesus here he was talking about coming to earth to kindle a fire to start a fire and there was a limit to you know what could be done on this earth until that fire was started and of course we know as we read in in acts chapter 2 you know that that fire um, was the fire of the holy ghost and John the Baptist said it himself, I baptize you with water unto repentance, but someone comes after me who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And Jesus's death, you know, when he, when he, when he died on the cross, uh, that was the moment that the Holy Ghost was able to be poured out. You know, it was poured out 50 days later on the, on the day of Pentecost, but it was his death which opened the way for God's spirit to be poured out on the whole of mankind. And that was what started the fire. And the Lord Jesus, he started a fire on that day, you know, trying to uh, not go into too much detail for sake of time here, but there's, there's a few things which are needed for uh, a fire to happen. You know, things like fuel, air, oxygen, um, and a spark, something, something to, ignite that fire something to kindle it and that's what christ did you know when he died on that cross on the day of pentecost when the holy spirit was poured out a fire was started a spark was lit and that same fire that was started on the day of pentecost has never gone out you know that's that's another characteristic of a fire a fire can spread a fire can spread and it has spread from that day of pentecost between 
one person to another to another to another there have been times in history when you know that fire has been been dimmed you know in the in the dark ages where the, the catholic church held sway and it might have seemed like that fire would nearly go out um, but it, it has never gone out on this earth there has always been a fire burning and I always love that um, that symbolism of, you know, uh, what they do with the Olympic torch, you know, before the Olympics, that they light this flame in uh, in Athens, I think it is, where the first Olympics were. And they, they get different people to carry this Olympic torch, you know, around the world. And the idea is that they're, they're carrying that same flame throughout the world. And, you know, one torch will ignite another. And, you know, that's that's what we've got with the Holy Spirit, you know, that that spirit, which was kindled which was lit which was ignited on the day of pentecost it has never gone out it has continually been burning being passed from one individual to another you know throughout the generations and uh and that same fire burns in us today and uh there's a there's a book called um the road by uh cormac mccarthy it's a, it's a fictional book it's not a spiritual or, or religious book um but it works quite well as a as a spiritual analogy and it's it's set in a world that is dying basically a world that is very dark and dying and it follows uh, a, a father and a son who are sort of traveling through this dark and dying world and the encouragement that the father um keeps giving to his his son is we need to keep carrying the fire and it's never explained in the in the book it was made into a into a movie as, as well if you're not into reading but he's, he's never explained what he means by this but he, he keeps encouraging his son with this with this uh with this thought we need we need to keep carrying the fire and uh i thought that that stuck with me because i, I felt it's a great uh encouragement that you know we are carrying a fire we're carrying the fire that was kindled and ignited on the day of pentecost and the encouragement from the lord is you know we need to keep carrying that fire no matter what the world may throw at us no matter how dark the world may seem we need to just keep on carrying that fire because that fire can continue to spread and it will it will never go out until the day that the lord jesus returns and um i'll just leave those uh, those thoughts there and uh we will